All right, hey everyone. For I know it takes a minute for the live stream to start broadcasting, but we are streaming on LinkedIn and YouTube. So those of you joining, welcome. Um, I'm Dave Fano here to help with job search advice, and I am joined by the illustrious <laughs> Dan from HR. Actually, Dan Space. I don't know which one's cooler, Dan from HR, or Dan Space. We can do both. <laughs> why not I can, I can go with both uh if you have any questions you can put them in the linkedin chat or youtube chat we will see it we're using this software called Streamyard, which is great that's not a sponsored plug we play we pay for it but it's actually super good um and uh we, it will come to us so we will try to answer it and some of the teal team oh there's leah right there she can try to answer things as well but with that let me go ahead and share my screen. Dan, anything you want to say? You want to introduce yourself for, all, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, the 1% who don't know who you are? <laughs> you flatter me, Dave. I'm going to just hire you to, to like walk around me and just remind me. of. I'm a good hype person. <laughs> so uh, I've worked in HR for 20 years. I've worked for companies like Spotify, like Electronic Arts, WebMD, um, as a senior HR business partner. So there's... Um, very little that goes on about corporate hiring and how it all works from the inside that I don't know about. So about two years ago, I started making TikTok content and Instagram content and Twitter content to sort of give all that information out to the public. I've connected with Dave. I love what he's doing with Teal. He's a really great resource in a sea of scammers and clowns. Um, and I'm very, very excited to join him today as we do some resume reviews. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That was very kind. It means a lot coming from you. Uh, I feel like you have a high bar. Uh, I do. Yes. <laughs> Also, Pepper's <laughs> not sponsoring me. This is just a fun t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to share my screen. I'm trying. Last week, I did it like interactive through my iPad and I was drawing on it, which was cool, but I don't know if it really added anything. So let's go ahead and I have it all in Airtable now because we're trying to notify the folks in advance that awesome. whose resumes we're reviewing, but they are redacted. Um, okay. So I have them nice in order. I hope the folks are here. You can claim it if you're not, but we're trying to maintain your privacy just in case. So the first person is looking for a new occupation. Mm. Um, they are looking into senior operations. Um, and we can very quickly pop open the JD that they're interested in. So senior operations manager. Okay, cool. Let me see if the LinkedIn, here we go. So we got new business, business development. Okay, so interesting operations, but I'm seeing a lot of BD stuff which I is interesting. We can uh, see if there's more here that I'm missing out on. Okay, admit budgeting, coaching. Okay, all right, let's do it. So I'm intentionally doing it here. Uh, and Dan, tell me if you disagree, but I feel like most recruiters and are looking in through some form of an ATS that's like giving you a preview mm -hmm. of the resume. So this is like exactly what people see the first time they see like the first top half, like in a resume preview. And I don't really review these too much in advance. We try to just do like initial reactions. Okay. So go ahead, Dan, what, what, what comes to mind? Me? Oh my. Um, I think I'm, I would be lying. This is not my, my first pass. I, I saw it before. So I, I, I have some notes ready to go. I don't awesome. want to be disingenuous. Um, <laughs> I really, really like a lot of these. I think the biggest thing that stood out to me is when you're when you're building a resume, and especially if you're in any kind of a job change or an industry change, is there's three different types of bullets. There's the strong impact bullet, there's the medium bullet that kind of tells what you did, and then there's what we call empty bullets. Mm -hmm. And empty bullets are like that really, really, really waste of space, like perform duties ad hoc. Mm -hmm. um, I loved a lot of these bullets. They were very strong. The biggest, biggest thing is that management is one of the key highest uh, things that someone could have. It's the very last bullet in this first entry. Mm -hmm. Like being a good manager and a leader, talking about how you hire people, how you train people, how you develop people, that should be the very first thing on this resume. Mm -hmm. And so I would like move the last bullet all the way up to the top one. Oh yeah, his hire train. Yep. So things that come to mind for me, like I, I, I like to try to highlight things that I think are great so that anyone who's listening can learn. So a mm -hmm. couple little things like, yeah, and like some of these are nitpicky. I kind of go all over the map and part of what I have some things I disagree with Dan on and I'm excited to disagree with him publicly right. uh, because let's be less about because resume advice is, is, is also quite subjective. And so Absolutely. hearing like different reasons and different thought processes, but I don't have any controversial on this resume. Actually, I might have one. Um, 
So I like the way this LinkedIn address is shown. You know, a lot of people, you'll see these in some of the ones we have, they just do LinkedIn and they make it a live link. And my concern with that is if the link breaks for some reason, now I can't get to your LinkedIn. So this person did LinkedIn.com. I think the most important part is after the slash in and your profile name, you could get rid of this if you wanted to, but don't do just the live link generally. Um, it was phone number, email address. There wasn't a location. I don't think that really matters. Do you have thoughts on that, Dan? It's really changed. Um, people assume that when you're uploading a resume that you have done the due diligence that you can legally work where they've indicated that they can perform phone work. So it's so, fine. For not an issue. Name was here. So, okay, so this person uh, has been working since 1995. When, when someone has <clears throat> a career history like this, I am a fan of a professional summary. Um, I'll give a couple reasons, right? So you're applying for senior operations manager. On the top half of this page, I don't see senior operations manager anywhere. Mm -hmm. And one of the things people are doing when they're hiring is like, they're, they're like saying, hey, does this person have the job I've had? And so by having those words on the screen, this isn't about tricking the ATS. It's about you projecting yourself as a senior operations manager. And if you haven't had that title before, presenting a target title under like a, just a brief professional summary allows you to kind of project you as that position. And the other reason I like a professional summary, and anyone who's heard me talk about these things is probably going to be bored of it, is it's, it's an opportunity for you to talk about your career in aggregate, right? In each role, you can only talk about your metrics at that job. But as an operations person, how much money have you saved over the course of your career? You know, if you're a customer service person, how many tickets have you resolved over the entirety of your career? It gives you an opportunity to do some like big, impressive numbers. But don't waste a lot of space. It could be two lines. So what I could see at the top of this resume is senior operations manager, a two sentence little blurb. You could do it in bullet form, however you want, I think could help give me like a trailer to what I'm about to see on this resume. Thoughts on that, Dan? I agree. I'm not a big fan of the pro professional summary or the objective, but if it's short and to the point and give someone like a wow, like, okay, now that I, now that I've absorbed that, I'm now going to go and look for that. Then I think it could absolutely work in your favor. And I, I, um, something you said, I don't think objectives are good. I think just putting in like a, Hey, I'm looking for this. I think those are horrible. I agree with Dan a thousand percent on that. That's a waste of space and do not just repeat what you have down below either. That's also a waste of space. What you're doing is like synthesizing and aggregating and taking advantage of an opportunity to kind of express numbers in a bigger way than you could lower. If you're just repeating stuff, then it's a waste. Don't do it. So Brady uh, just asked something in the chat that I thought was a great question. How often do professional summaries get read? I love questions like that because they lead to an imaginary world where we have all of that data or like tracking people's men mental states. Um, but I would say the professional summary, you have a much higher chance of it being read provided that it's two to three sentences max and it tells a good story. So like, for example, I would say my professional summary as an HR business partner is probably just going to be overlooked. People are just skimming it because all of my job titles reflect that. But if I wanted to go from like operations manager to consumer insights, that would be a very red customer or um, professional summary to say, I started in operations and here's why I'm going to insights. The other thing is, so I'm on the Dan train as well about cover letters being the worst thing ever. If yes. this person's career transitioning, it gives you like a line or two to dull a little bit of that story. So I think for pivoters also, uh, it gives you like a little intro that isn't embedded in the body of like a position. So if you were a teacher who now wants to be in learning and development, right, it's hard. You, yes, you should definitely use the wording around curriculum you created and instructional design, but a little professional summary right there may also help you make your pitch. Um, if you're doing the same job you've done before and it's kind of a linear progression, it to Dan's point, it may be less valuable. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, cool. So working our way down this one, um, format's super clean. I like that the bullets, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like this resume is also just really dense to read a little dense. It just feels like a wall of text. We have a re request to see the second page. Ah, uh, yes, that's okay. Good call. So let's make it nice and big. I always like to look at the whole page now. Um, and here we are on second page. 
So I think also just dialing back into the first one a little bit, and I know if we're trying to get through six, the idea would probably be to spend about 10 minutes per one. Um, yeah. One of the things that's standing out to me that I would love to see a little bit of improvement on is that there's not a lot of what we call like the strong action verbs. Like when we think mm -hmm. about it, when we think about dynamic verbs, it's that's, those are the power verbs that really call attention into what you did. And four or yeah, four of these bullets are, is an indication of a role that you played, not an action verb. So like, point of contact, key collaborator, project manager, subject matter expert. Those are all really impressive, but if you could verb those instead of like uh, project managed or oversaw a high scope project that did these things, like it's just a really great opportunity to, to highlight your skill instead of just being someone that helped people do things. And part of what I'm struggling with is like seeing the impact of it. It's kind of like descriptive of what happened, but like what was the result? So hire, train and develop all-star team of six remote analysts over three states throughout, okay, weekly team meetings. Okay, I understand what you did, but what was the result of that? Did the business get better because you onboarded them so well, they didn't have to hire other people. They, you know, most people on get sort of onboarded in six months because of your impact, they onboarded in three, you know, and then what I would do with that information is I would put it first, you know, um, increase the uh, effectiveness of our onboarding process by 60% by hiring, training and developing an all-star team. Also, I think words like all-star generally kind of get like. It's a little subject, high performing. That's what you want. Yeah. It, it's yeah. So it's like stuff like that's like, look, that's super subjective and it's kind of filler. Um, and so I would also like, it's one thing I see a lot on resumes is folks just think like, oh, I just got to get seven bullets on there. But you got to think about the way people read. And I always say like the job of a line of text is to keep you reading the next one. And so like the way people skim is as they work down, just think about, oh, think about what you do. When you read a book and you've lost your interest, okay, you then start to read like the first sentence in each paragraph. If like it's still not keeping your interest, then you're kind of like, all right, I'm just kind of like reading the first sentence on each page. And then you check out. So the same with a resume, the order of the bullets is really important. Yeah. Make sure your best bullet is the first one. Absolutely. And then your second bullet, your second best is the second best one. Because if your first one's not your best one, they're not going to read your second one. They're just going to jump to the next job. And then, and they're just going to say, okay, I'm out. Right. And that's, there's this kind of mythical seven minutes, seven seconds. It's not that people fully analyze a resume in seven, seven seconds, but they do, I think, within a very short period of time, decide if they want to dig deeper. Absolutely. Um, so a couple other quick things on this one, this skills and interest section is too big. I would say if there's a key keywords in here and things that you want, you know, to the person to notice, incorporate them into the positions themselves. I'm a fan, like if you're going to do skills, I actually do look at skills sections because I'm oftentimes looking for like technical abilities. Like does a person know soft, like Amplitude or Figma or things like that. I think those are helpful. Things like Microsoft Word, Excel, those are kind of like a given. Um, but I wouldn't give it so much space. Um, okay. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then I think the professional development's fine. Education's fine. I, I, I I wouldn't do like the kitchen sink approach. Like I would include these things if they're relevant to the job you're applying to. So if it's not helping build the case for like this job, don't include them. I would agree. All right. That's it for this one. Cool. Hopefully that the person's on the call. Hopefully they like the feedback. Overall, Let's... one last positive call out for that resume, by the way, you had a lot of really great numbers and statistics, which is great. There was so many good quantification examples. So absolutely good, great job. That's something that absolutely stands out to as people are reviewing resumes. 100% because our, our eyes just like see them. I see that number, that number. But now what I would say to, to the other point is like, make this one first or okay. this one first. Call those out. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Next one. This person is pivoting from academia to industry uh, using their experiential psychology research and data analytics experience to serve business. So this person's a career pivoter. The job they were looking at is um, this job at Zillow, which is for senior behavioral scientist. All right, cool. And all right, let's hop open this resume.
All right, I'll kick us off this time since Dan kicked us off last time. Um, all right, there's the name, there's a credential. I'm curious to get Dan's take on that. I don't think it's a bad thing, but um, your full address was on here. I just left this to remind me. Like, you don't need to do that. Maybe like in an academic setting, that was a thing. But in most corporate settings, you don't need your full address. If you want, you could do your city and state. Um, so I would get rid of your address on here. I was curious to get, I've seen like silly things about judging email addresses that are not like brands like Gmail or Outlook. So that's why I left this unobfuscated. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think recruiters are that fickle. Um, LinkedIn URL look good. If you wanted to like, just look, make it look a little cleaner, you can get rid of this HTTPS and even the WWW stuff. And then to my point earlier, these are live links. So if for some reason these links broke, or, you know, their corporate infrastructure doesn't allow it to go to outside links or who knows what. Now I can't get to these, um, which would be a real bummer. So I would look at trying to get the actual address on here if you really want the person to see it. Um, I like I like the, the, the target title. I'm saying I am a senior behavioral scientist. If a recruiter is searching the ATS by title, the text is on the resume. I love it. That's not bots. That's not AIs. That's just Boolean text. But I like that the words are there. Um, and then this the, this is another version of the professional summary that I think is interesting, right? Like right there, boom, in aggregate, 15 years of experience. Like as a recruiter, I don't need to tally it up by looking at all your jobs. You just like told me. Um, so I like it, you know, not digging too deep into to the content itself. You know, maybe like I would like to see some more numbers in here. And I know this is probably a field it's a little trickier, but, you know, interviews, sessions, users, studies, you know, those are all things you could talk about potentially in number form as a researcher that I might expect. Um, Dan, any, any thoughts here? This is so fascinating. I always love seeing when the academics sort of uh, pivot. I agree with everything you said so far. And one of the things that um, this person did that I really like is that bold. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very, very, very subtle psychological technique and people normally get surprised that they can do that. That is a phenomenal way to tell your reader where to focus and where mm -hmm. to put their attention. So I thought that was great. Um, looking down there, they do things a little bit unorthodox and you don't usually say, I was a senior behavioral scientist at these five things in parentheses and here are just some of my accomplishments. But I think this is a very niche type of role. Anytime we've hired for those roles, you normally get like seven candidates um, and they're from academia. So they're usually used to writing things in a different format. Um, I don't think that detracts anything away. The bullets are very, very strong. They're very well written. They're good impact, what, how impact bullets. Um, I second your thought that I would love to see a little bit more numerology. Um, me just absolutely nitpicking here, but I would want the experience to be like to the left to justify it a bit and bolded and something just so that you're sort of calling better attention out, but it's not gonna make or break it. Um, I think the only downside is I think, and this happens a lot when people do any kind of an industry shift, you spend, so much time bragging about you, which is what the purpose of the resume is, absolutely. But if you're doing an industry change, you have to spend some time finding bullet points that a business is going to say, oh, good, now I can make that connection. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of these points are very focused on the data for academia. I would want to put like one or two of how you were able to potentially make a business case. So what's helpful here sometimes is like going to the JD. So it's the survey design analysis, right? Expertise with survey design analysis. like. I would want to see, and I, I haven't memorized the resume, but like if I did like a quick search, would a I survey, uh -huh. cool. Now it's at the, you know, it's, yeah, Qualtrics, good keywords. I'd want to see kind of like how you did that in action, potentially. Sometimes this stuff will get is, valued a little. Uh, uh, -huh. uh Six Bullet Down has, expert, uh, has the survey Perfect. design. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. All right. You did it. Nice job. I know who's, I know this person's resume, so I almost said their name. Uh, nice job. <laughs> you know who you are. Um, and so here's some other ones, you know, R, Python, you know, technical things like that. So I'm not going to go through one by one, but, you know, that might be the kind of thing that I would look for. Right. Okay. So there's no Python on here. Now, if you don't have the skill, don't lie, of course. But if you do, you know, don't miss out the chance. Small plug, the Teal Resume Builder does this for you automatically. So, but there's also other cool tools that do that. There's one called Skill Sinker. JobScan does it for free just to show you other, but there are some tools that automate that process for you. Just 
don't buy into the it's for the ATS. Like the you know, at least the way I've seen it when I worked with a recruiter is I would give them a brief. Like I need a, a sales exec that's got enterprise experience. And honestly, I don't want them to relearn Salesforce. So if they've got, you know, like that matters to me. And so then the recruiters are looking for that kind of stuff on the resumes. It's not about an ATS. It's not a bot. They just have like four or five keywords that they're skimming for. And it's kind of your job to try to discern from the JD what those might be. Sometimes they're not there at all because they didn't write a great job description. Um, any thoughts on that, Dan? I think that what you're saying is accurate. The idea of really just putting in very specifics and utilize the most important part is keyword and keyword strings, um, which is why I always tell people not to try to describe yourself in interesting ways. There was someone I helped like a, a few months ago who was in marketing and all of her bullet points were like curating the customer journey and storytelling. I'm like, that, that's great. That's wonderful. But no one is looking for those in keywords. So just finding and matching that at every opportunity is always going to work in your benefit. All right, going to give you guys a break from the screen share so we can answer some questions here. I got this format. Oh, cool. Nice. Big Dan and Dave. Um, okay, let's see what we got here. We've got how many bullet points are too many bullet points? I get advice to keep it succinct and include everything relevant. Do you generalize your ability skills? This particular resume appears dense, long. That might have been for the first one. That was at 412, so that was probably a comment about the first resume. Uh, I think 1 million bullets are too many. That's <laughs> <laughs> there's So there's going to be the, the, the one frustrating thing, and I'm sure uh, Dave has the exact same thought process on this, is that all of these really great questions, that because people want the perfect resume. They want the idea, what's the optimized resume, what's the optimized LinkedIn, but all of those things are going to be, it depends. Um, if your resume has eight bullets versus 10 bullets, it's not as though it's going to get kicked out or not kicked out. It's just about taking account into what you think is the most important thing for your reader to know while also considering that they're reading things. If you really want to swear by a number, my general thought process is eight for your most recent one is getting to be a little bit too much. Um, I would normally stick with five or six as an ideal if they're really impactful. Um, if you have a, a longer experience that's more than five to six years, then I think it makes a little bit more sense to be a little bit longer. But that's also in a direct correlation to how long ago the job was. Um, so these are all kind of factors to think about. But my general thought process is if it's getting to eight, you're trying to get it. It may be getting too long. Yep. Agreed. Um, also, I, I'm in the like customized resumes per job camp. Um, nope. Now, <laughs> there's like layers to that. Right. And, and I come from a sales background. I used to do sales and I use that as like a very specific analogy, right? When I'm a salesperson, companies usually put out what's called an RFP, request for proposals, where they describe all the things they expect. And I would be a horrible salesperson if I went and just gave every company the same pitch. And I'm kind of hoping that my pitch happens to align with what this company was asking for. Where a good salesperson says, I'm just going to like, like, I've got a lot of things I could do, but I'm just going to like give them a small sliver of what I'm capable of that responds exactly to what they're asking for. And what I've seen a lot of people do with resumes is they cast a wide net. They're like, I'm just gonna show them everything I'm good at and hopefully they'll give me the benefit of the doubt and they'll pick the 10% that's actually relevant to them. It doesn't, the world doesn't work like that. Like they wanna see, unfortunately in the hiring process, square pegs in square holes. Mm. Like if, you're a marketer and you happen to be good at video editing, but that is not part of their JD. More often than not, they will not be like, oh, great. We're getting a video editor and a marketer out of this person. It kind of waters down your offering. So what I would say is include the bullets that make your case. If you're applying to a lot of jobs that have very similar requirements, awesome. Just make one resume. But if you're applying to jobs that have very different requirements, don't worry about having one resume that's got bullets that address both you know it's okay to tweak it a little again i will plug the teal resume builder here real quick because we've we've like purposely built it to be able to do this because it is a headache i think a lot of times people tell you not to do it because it takes a lot of time and so if like effort to impact ratio is not there then i totally get it don't do it but we've built it in a way where you can just like quickly turn on and off bullets so that you can, you can still have like this exhaustive main resume with everything you've ever done, but you can tailor it very quickly. 
All right. This isn't a deal promo show. So I just wanted, to, this is more conceptually. Um, all right. Uh, that was that question. All right. There's, uh, we'll get to the next one on the next round because we're at 426 already and Dan's got to go at 445. All right. Let's go. Ahead. All right. All right. This is a person re entering the workforce after a career break, trying to pivot into ed tech and build on my project management and program management background. Those are two very different jobs. So it's kind of starting to thread, trying to thread the needle here. Um, okay. Um, scroll up. Dan, you want to take initial reactions on this one? Uh, I will. Um, okay. So first, the format is a killer. Um, one of the things that we really try to push is to always avoid where possible a dual uh, a du dual column sort of page format. You always want to have single page format, not one page resumes, but single page format. Every once in a while, when you do a dual column like this, the ATS does not take the pictures accurately and all of your information gets destroyed. So this is this method or this sort of design is called a CV. It's very popular in Europe, um, in some places in academia, where the ATS is designed and programmed for this. But in many cases for US companies, something like this may get destroyed. Um, you also like the, the biggest thing about a resume is maximizing real estate. And the, the best part of this resume is that you work at Uber. You worked at Uber. That is a resume open, that is that will open doors. But that is so buried, like it's on the second page um, in this very, very small text. Um, and what one of the things that you're seeing is that the you, you have the roles really up and bolded, which is great, but the companies that you work for are so minimized, like I had to look back and forth a few times before I actually got what it was that you did. Um, there's so much amazing experience. It would just be, uh, I think, in your best interest to remove like the summary of qualifications, change this to single page format, um, really bold some of the companies that you did. Now, I'm not familiar with SFR3, so if that's the case, you always have to tap into what we call familiarity bias. Everyone knows Uber, that's going to catch people's attention. But if you work for a company that doesn't have familiarity bias, it's always great just to write a one sentence, I italicized sentence of saying, this is what this company does, um, just to be able to give some context to the recruiter or to the hiring manager as they're reviewing it. Um, the bullet points were absolutely phenomenally built. There's some really great impact stuff, um, good quantification. I just wanted to see some things bolded and just considering more on the reader side. Agree with all that. I like this professional summary. Um, you do a little bit of the name dropping early on. I also think you could, you don't have to just do two. I mean, Exxon's a great, to Dan's point on familiarity bias, you had United Nations, I think down here. Uh, I know it's an internship and these are so, but you know, Exxon Mobil, that's like familiarity bias. Those are going to be known. Um, eight plus years, you tell me right there, 300 million. That's just Uber Eats. That's job specific, but that's still an impressive number. Um, so I like this one and it's not too long. And if this was one column, like Dan was saying, this would maybe be three lines max. Then you could put strategic operations here and you don't need this like summary of qualifications. Just like make that the heading makes it nice and tight. You got about, you know, let's call it a 10th of the page back. Um, other little, this is the example of the live LinkedIn profile. If this link broke, I can't find you, you know? Um, so I would adjust that, um, on the kind of ATS so, yeah, in one breath, I'll say, don't worry about the bots. Don't worry about ATS. I believe that to be true. But parsability, right, is like how the text gets saved, how it gets like structured. Um, to Dan's point, the two column doesn't work. And other, other things that mess with like the parsability are these like little images and things like that. I don't think they add much. Mm. Um, so I'd get rid of those. Again, I'm a fan of a list of skills. I'm not a fan of it in this format. Um, so then, the, but let's also look at the skills themselves. Things like intermediate Excel, I'd get rid of. I, 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 I don't love seeing a skill like empathy. What What do you think, Dan? Uh, I think like I get why people want to do it, but what I would try to find th things like empathy or active listening or or m mental health concern are important. Especially, I saw that this person was a manager, which is great. But I would find places to put that in the bullets. And especially yep. as management, like saying management with empathy, focus, um, build high performing team due to open culture of collaboration and mental care, things like that, rather than just putting it as a skill. Yeah, I agree. Like soft skills. I feel like this really should be like hard skills. Like if I've got particular technologies I want in my mind, like if, you know, if you're a project manager and agile or scrum is important, like, you know, again, always in the body is better, but soft skills on the list, I think really have carry so little weight. And honestly, look a little weird, just as like these like freestanding words, like empathy. So the more you can illustrate that, 
led a team through, you know, a transition or turnaround or, you know, grew a team, hired, had the best retention, stuff like that. Um, awards. I tend to see awards more with like recent grads. Um, unless with someone who's got like eight plus years experience, unless it specifically ties to like some of these are like for project management awards, but I don't know. What do you think, Dan? I like seeing them provided that it's at least somewhat relatable. So like the, mm -hmm. The keynote speaker for Kayak Hispanic Heritage Month, I think is great, presented on challenges, Latin employees. I think that's phenomenal because that's so important and very, very relevant and part of those conversations. Um, I even think like the ExxonMobil Global Process and Planning Award is great, like, um, like because none of these are not attached to things that could be at work. Like if it was, you know, I won an award because I, I, I cooked the best peach pie in this, then I would always say no. But if they're professional or at least somewhat related to industries or even common concepts in industries, I think it's fine to leave on. But you just want to minimize that space. That should be like an added data note, like after education. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Uh, another thing on this one is that you have a repeating header. I would get rid of that. You don't need repeating headers on resumes. Yeah. You could just you just need that one time name and you know whatever contact info you don't need to repeat that on each page you're wasting valuable space um so you can get rid of that and i, I you know th things like the level of expertise sometimes you'll see like on on people will put like their level of one to five like i don't think those things are really helpful and i think like based on what's so i would just like english spanish comma done yeah um and here's one that i'm kind of curious about dan like you know, You'll see some people say, look, give a little bit of like a personal touch. Like, how do you feel about stuff like this that give a little personality? I'm generally opposed to it, not because I don't think people should should include part of themselves to it, but it's just about maximizing real estate. Um, so anything that goes on your resume, it should be about what value it's going to bring to someone who's reading it and absorbing it. And I think, you know, you can include including awards is relevant when you start getting into books the, the possibility of someone scanning that far down and making the potential connection from it is not going to be as relevant as when it's brought up in an interview, as an example. Like, I much prefer it to be an interview thing. It won't hurt in any way, shape, or form, but if you ever nick something else in order to include it that may potentially raise your rank score or may potentially get someone's interest, then you put yourself at a little bit of risk. Yeah, the last thing I'll say on this resume is, like, sometimes you're trying to, like, bolster your profile. This person has a phenomenal like work history, absolutely. You know, really good, relatable brands, really good achievements. If a person for some reason wants to like read down the left spine before they ever get to the content, I feel like the stuff on the left is less impressive than the stuff on the right. Yeah, this is one bullet point I'm reading, generated $18 million in savings by collating driver's fare reduction Miami. Well, like, that's huge. That's that's, that's like, amazing. that's that's bullet number one. Like that's, that's the thing that'll get you. Oh, here's another one. Um, so sometimes when you put a line, uh, below, like I only really like this line to describe the company if the company is not a known company, but this is no different than a bullet. So like, why is some, why is this one a line versus the rest are bullets? Like, I really prefer consistency. Like you're making my brain work. It's like, why is this different than this? Like, you know, so just like stay consistent, either go paragraph form or go bullet form, but I'm not a fan of like the mix and match. I can see that. Um, oh, here's another one. Um, you're not, this person's not including the months. I oh. always talk about like, what are the things that uh, like recruiters and hiring managers, right? They're, they're looking like their brain is pre programmed with no. You are doing everything you can to get them to say yes, right? Because like the safest thing is to just say no. Because if they let in, a, let in a bad hire, so they're just like looking for things that are mistakes. And they're going to assume worst intent generally. And it behooves you to assume they're going to assume worst intent. So like when I see this, I'm like, oh, this person worked from December, 2018 to January, 2020. They were actually there only 14 months. What are you trying to hide? Like, what are you leaving out by not including it? Mm -hmm. And so unless you are actively trying to like mask that, which that's what they're going to assume. So then it doesn't matter. I think you're better off including the months and the years. That's the general feeling I've heard from speaking to recruiters. Thoughts on that, Dan? Um, I always lean towards months, um, but I don't, I haven't seen it cause that much alarm if if they're off. But I think in a, in, a, in a case where it's better safe than sorry and optimizing every point, it always makes more sense to put the months. 
like this looks weird, right? 2017 to 2017. It's like, that's not telling me anything. True. I would just put 2017. Oh, and my apologies if the person's here. I do see actually now that SFR3 does have that description. But to David Day's point earlier, it's not called out in a way that called my attention. I was looking at the regional general manager, but I now see real estate meets tech, one of the largest single family renovation funds in the US. That's great. Um, I would though, I would, for resumes, like I would just make it as sterile as possible. So single family renovation fund, that's a good, you know, real estate tech family, like just one sentence italicized and then put some spaces in because to Dave's point before, like you always have to consider your reader and that's how easily I glossed over that. Yeah. Cause you all like, it's also, it's like describing the company and including an achievement. Right. Right. So if it's going to serve that function, just let it be that function. Don't try to blend it with an achievement. Like this is an impressive bullet on its own. I'd want to read led 29 in-person full training weeks to, you know, 5X personal growth. That Okay. Well, I don't know what 5X personal growth means, but yeah, that's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's let it do one thing. Like make sure each line has like one job. Um, okay, cool. We'll leave it that one. Really As great content. Next, I'm just going to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dave. No, go ahead. I was going to say really great content on this resume. Yeah, I was going to say like this, this person is a mover and shaker. I'm very excited to see what they bring to the world. Like looking at their skills, looking at their achievements. I'm very, very impressed. All righty. Uh, we'll, uh, Leah, maybe you can slack me on our teal slack if there's like a question I missed because I want to try to actually get through all six of these. Let's see. Oh, there. Leah already did that. Uh, okay, cool. Um, do, 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 do. All right. This person is looking for a new occupation and a new industry. So that's like the hardest of career pivots. Um, Away from architecture, ah, near and dear to my heart. That was my past life. Um, ba -ba -ba. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we'll try not to repeat the same stuff. So two columns, same things apply. Um, if I zoom in a little. Where are you guys these templates? <laughs> uh, I, th this is, if I had to guess, this was done like an illustrator in design because that's what I'm someone saying. with an architecture background, that's... That's what you're going to expect. That's what's going to happen. Uh, architecture schools do not have career services. <laughs> Having taught one. Uh, all right, Dan, what do you got? No, I did, the, I did the last one. You can start this one. Okay. So, all right, you are pivoting. Let me see what you're pivoting to because you sent us a job. So, service design project lead. Um see what some of the requirements here experience in creating service design outputs including so service design is a very specific kind of ux craft planning conducting analyzing qual, qual a lot of research okay all right so now let's see um okay so again there's like the be wary of the two column thing um I don't think I wouldn't put designer necessarily as if I'm going to go ahead and use a like target title, go ahead as a pivoter channel, the title you're going after, which in this case would be service design project lead. I would just put, if you're going to customize one thing on your resume, just like toss it there. Cause you're not going to have that in your work experience anywhere. Um, okay. I'm not a fan of these paragraphs. Yeah. So there's a lot of unconventional things here. Like you're putting the date first. You're putting the role and the company. Um, these are very well-known architecture firms. I know that because I came from that field. Um, to Dan's point, if you're applying somewhere where they don't know these architecture firms, they don't know that NBBA is like one of the top firms in the country, you may want to say, you know, multi, you know, a firm with 10 offices globally, uh, you know, thousands of employees kind of gives that. And then member of Corn Shell Project. So here's something I'm going to bring up also. For someone who had a very like project-based career history, you could consider doing a projects section mm -hmm. um, instead of trying to embed it in the work because you kind of want to, especially if you're career pivoting. Like if you were applying to an architecture firm, maybe this would work because they speak in projects and like and square feet. But if you were going into this like service design position. You're going to want to talk more about your involvement in the design process. Did you do user research? Did you do user interviews in the design process? You have to map your language to where you're going. 
and not use the language of where you're coming from because it's not going to mean anything to your audience. Um, so that's a big one. Graphically, I'm actually having a hard, like my eyes having a hard time, like with where to focus. I'm seeing a lot of different things. I'm seeing like a gray, all caps, bolded, sans serif. Then I'm seeing graphics and I'm seeing like a mix max of bolded. Then like here, it's all the same weight. Um, yeah, I'm like, I'm, my eye is not being sort of guided in a, in a super intuitive way. And then I'm also seeing like, um, kind of uncommon sections like community. I don't entirely know what that means. Uh, I just feel like I'm having to do a lot of work as a reader to interpret what's going on here. Dan, you want to jump in? Uh, I, I agree. It's a, it's, it's, this is a challenging to read, especially because um, I'm very honest. Uh, design and architecture is not something I'm very familiar with. So I thought MBBJ was uh, an acronym for something else. And I was researching it. To <laughs> so I was really glad you expl expressed what it is. I, it, after a little bit of time, I got, I'm, I sort of, I'm, I've downloaded the internal key, which is essentially that you have like this, you put like design experience, uh, tech experience, teaching experience, work study experience, but essentially each one is its own. Um, and I think that it, in a in a lot of cases, what you're doing is just losing real estate. Like the t the stuff that happened more than ten years ago, you can just put in like what we call a previous experience section, and that's where you've done things that are unrelated to what you want to do now or what you do now. And you could just do like one sentence on each one, like project manager, flying machine development, 2005 to 2007. Um, I'm having trouble picking out like what the big achievements are because a lot of these entries are are more reflections of what you did. And there's some roles in where you kind of have to do that, but the purpose of a resume is always just a good reflection of, of your achievement. What did you bring to this specific company? Because when these new recruiters and new hiring managers are looking for that, they're going to try to make that connection. I mean, there is an absolutely phenomenal amount of wonderful, wonderful experience here um, that I think just putting it back into single page mode and really focusing on achievements will give you a chance to bring it out a lot more so that a reader can see the same thing that you've done as, uh, as, as easy as possible. Yeah, I would, I know, look, I, I studied architecture. I taught a lot of architecture students. Bespokeness is highly valued in that world, but I would encourage you to go with a much more normative resume template and like standards, especially if you're pivoting out of architecture where maybe architects might value the sort of more unique approach. Um, they probably don't have ATSs in their office. So a lot of those things don't even matter. You're emailing it to a partner at the firm. But I feel like here, the efforts that you've gone through to like organize the information are actually hurting you. Um, and you also have really good information on like the, so if you think about the way we read here in English, we read, top down, left to right. So like, this is probably going to be like red last-ish. You've got some like cool company names to, to Dan's point earlier about familiarity bias. You worked on projects at Microsoft. Um, I don't know who Vulcan Properties is, but um, there's some good stuff here. There's some numbers and like, it's like buried down here in the lower right in this like tech experience section, which again, I don't even really know what that means. So I would just try... Go the opposite. Go do the most boring, vanilla, reverse chronological resume. Just get your content really tight, the narrative clean, and then if you want to jazz it up visually. Um, but I would give give that a shot. All right, also, uh, update your LinkedIn URL. This is nitpicky, but get yourself a custom one where you don't have all this gobbledygook on the back. Um, all right. It's, next uh, one. It's 445. I got to head out. Yep. This was so great. I absolutely did. Thank you so much for your questions for the opportunity. Everyone have a really wonderful day. All right. See you later. Thank you. All right. I will answer a couple of questions. Let me stop screen sharing real quick. Okay. So the question that came in, we have experience with several consecutive employers that are fundamentally the same job. So look, I think that, Sure, like from a responsibilities perspective, they may have been the same job, but I doubt that the impact you had was the same. Um, and so that might be efficient in terms of like writing, but I think it's more valuable to break that out into separate sort of roles and talk about the impact you had at each of those positions. And, just, you know, look at the JD 
Um, and so I, I know who asked this question. And um, so let's look at the responsibilities on this job, All right? Uh, statistical interference, blah, blah, blah. you know, all right. Did you do this particular thing at one of the jobs? Okay, so, you know, notch that in there. And see if you like what I tell people is like put a question mark at the back of these each of these bullets and answer them via the resume. And it just like you know, it looks good to like structure them out. This is the impact I had at each job. You could say, look, I did all of that at all the jobs, but there's just something about showing that like chronology and that narrative that I think people are expecting, where I don't know if that like efficiency is really benefiting you. All right. Um what number of years should the resume cover was another question. So look, I don't like to give sort of binary answers to some of these questions um, because the answer is almost always, it depends. What I say is like, I like to bring this to a place of intent, right? The job of your resume is to make the best case possible for why that company should hire you for that job. So if there was something that you did at the very beginning of your career that helps make the case for why they should hire you, include it. If there was stuff in the middle of your career that could detract, is useless, adds no value, exclude it. So don't think about it as like this limit or filter. Think about it at like the exp per experience level. So if you worked in retail early in your career, and then you worked in other industries, and now you're applying for a job where they're in the retail industry, I think it is valuable to show that you've had experience in that domain that helps make your case. So I would think about it that way. Like look at each bullet on your resume and say, is this like, you know, on like the, the scale of decision makings where someone's putting a weight on the yes and a weight on the no, like, is that bullet a weight on the yes? If you can't make a case for <clears throat> explicitly now, not like, well, maybe, what if, if you find yourself doing that, then the answer is definitely no. If it, it clearly increases the decision to make yes on the, based on the JD, then include it on the resume, no matter how far back it was. Yeah, now, take that with a grain of salt. You know, if it feels like an internship you had in elementary school. Obviously, don't include that, you know, in like your professional world. Uh, they like things that they think you would bring to to the experience today. All right, let's try to see if we can zip through. Well, I have I can go a little extra, so let's make sure we get through these last two. Let me share my screen again. <clears throat> okay, this is looking for a new occupation. Um, worked in strategy and ops for the last few years. Uh, org design and org change. HR business partner. Oh, it's such a bummer. We lost Dan for this one. This is what his exact job. Uh, or a focus on hospitality industry, lateral or downshift to junior product role. Okay, a lot of different things you're solving for. I think it's very hard for one resume to address all those things. But let's see what we got. Okay. <clears throat> so contact information at the top was nice and clean and simple. This isn't if you know, I don't Yeah, New York City is fine. New York, New York would be fine. I don't think it makes so much of a difference, but this was all good. Okay, professional experience, that's fine. Restaurant growth strategist. Okay, like if you were freelance, you change this title to like a lines. You have complete control of what that title is. So, you know, it's not something, if you're not like applying for this job, then don't change it. But if you are, that could be helpful. Um. Okay, launch neighborhood restaurant to 2 million run rate revenue within six months. That's awesome. Love that. Um, built social presence for new restaurant gained. Okay, cool. All right, lots of numbers. Um, uh, this is like a great opener. It's like, all right, I'm interested. You know, um, let's look at the job that you sent over. Love Airbnb. Employee experience program manager. All right. So if I was using that resume to apply to this job, I don't think that's the best opener, actually. Um, if you were applying for like a growth marketing position or something like that, that makes sense. But I would want to see how many people did you hire to like help make this happen? Um, 
maybe some customer service type stuff, hospitality type stuff. Um, so I would want to tailor this resume to that job. Let's see here, managing strategy, okay. I don't love sub hierarchy on positions. Um, you know, it just adds another like amount of information I need to process. Like, why are you categorizing this? I'm not sure it's that helpful for me as the reader, just like it's taking more space. Just keep it simple. Now it's another visual element. I have these empty circles versus solid circles. You're already using underlining, which I kind of like, but I've got a lot of graphical notation systems that I'm kind of trying to ingest. Um, but the, the quality of the bullets are very good. Good usage of numbers, good impact statements. The format's very simple. Personally, I'm a fan of company first, so I like that. You could take some liberties with some of these titles. So consulting analyst, maybe just business analyst, maybe map it. If, if you were applying to those kinds of positions. Um, skills and education are clean and simple. Um, this is a, you got a good amount of professional experience. You know, you're talking about seven, eight years. Maybe a professional summary could help you to like weave it all together and to build the narrative for the career transition. Especially if you get rid of some of this nesting, you get a little bit of space back. Um, I think you could then put in the target title in a professional summary, uh, which could help um, sort of make an opening statement for why you're applying to some of these positions. Um, but overall, I think this is a great resume. Just a few little tweaks I'd make here and there. All right. All right. This is pivoting into a new industry. Uh, let's see the job. Cloud engineer, one plus year experience supporting DevOps teams. Okay. Continuous improvement. Okay, since Teal Extension works here, let's go ahead and save this job and look at the keywords real quick. DevOps. Docker. Okay, a lot of hard skills. And then good emphasis on some soft skills management. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's look at this resume. This person obfuscated it for me, so thank you. Um, all the contact information is great. Summary. Mission-driven cloud engineer with 400 plus training hours and experience in cloud computing. So I love this. This is cool. This person's pivoting. They maybe didn't want to do it in years, but 400 plus training hours. Yeah, okay, so they just pivoted. Like, so for that job, they might struggle because they don't have the one plus year. But I think this is a really cool tactic. Capable of assisting companies. All right, this part's a little trickier, but as a career pivoter, I'm into it. Instead of summary, I would maybe put the title there of cloud engineer, you know, because you're not lying. You haven't had that job. You're saying, I want that job. So I, that might be a way to kind of, again, project that position. Technical skills. I don't know what these are links to. Oh, your credentials on Credly. Okay, that's cool. Um, if these links break, you know, I would maybe put it in like a certification section and put the actual links to them if that part's important to you. All right, so these are a bunch of courses. I'm not sure I love the leading with courses. And as a piv, I, I wish Dan was here because I'd be curious to get his take. It's an interesting approach, but you might lose me. Somebody's like, you're just summarizing the courses. Um. Yeah, like you've had some experience as, as a training participant. You were a COO. I I would put your professional experience first on on this job. I know that some like maybe you drop the banking specialist, but like this one where you're director of child and chief operating officer, I'd probably lead with that title first. Um, well, this is also kind of you have three very different positions. You had director of childhood development, chief operating officer, and maintenance technician. 
not, not there's anything wrong with any of those on their own, but they're very, very different. Um, and if you're, I, I would, I mean, depending, manage a hundred uh, budget. Yeah, I don't know if I would include the one that helps make the most case. Like in my case, I think the fact that you held three jobs, well, there's there's a couple parts to this. You were there for a while as well from 2004. So you could show your career progression. I would assume you started here and worked your way to these. So what you would do is you would show the position and then the bullets under each position. And then maybe like maintenance technician, if it's not really adding any value to you being a now cloud engineer, you just don't put any bullets for that one. But I would put the professional experience first. I think it's quite unorthodox to go with like so much education at the beginning. Actually, your entire first page. Like a person would have to be really committed to like you and this education to read past this first page, to be honest. Um, so I would get your experience back up. Um, you could start with this one. And then do this one. I think you could cut this one to the question earlier of how long should you go back. I, I don't think this one's really helping. Um, cloud engineer. You know, so I would get rid of it. Um, this is a kind of a big skills section, but it's jam-packed with keywords, which I kind of like. It's got some soft skills in there, like growth mindset. I don't think necessarily, but you got a lot of like the really good S2, EC2 that you know those technologies I think is great. I'm a fan. This resume should be probably one page um, and I would really tighten up the education. Like all, like I just think it's way too much, each of these certificates. Um, if you wanted to include that, it would absolutely be the third page um, as almost like think of it as like a resume appendix, which is not normal, but if it's really important for you to have it there, that's where I would do it. So like if they don't read it, it doesn't entirely matter. But I would just do certificates and just do the titles of the certificates and not all this text below. All right. Well, hope that was helpful. Let's see how we're doing on time. Ah, 4.58 on the dot. Let me look and see if there's any questions. All right. If you have any questions, um, put them in the chat. I'm seeing them. I'll uh, stop my screen share here. Um. A lot of this advice that I'm giving is actually baked right into the Teal Resume Builder. Um, let me show you how that works if you haven't used it. Um, if you go over to your Resume Builder and you go to your analysis, we will walk you through all these issues. You know, like, again, we recommend a target title. This is Teal's opinion. You can choose to ignore these if you want. Um, but, you know, once you add your target title, that issue is going to be resolved. It usually should update. Sometimes you may have to refresh. There it goes. It was 73%. So it caught it. Just took a second. Um, then, uh, you know, you turn on your professional summary. It'll then give you credit for that. And you can work your way through. It'll tell you which achievements. We kind of have an opinion of like 15 to 20 total resume bullets. Uh, so it'll help you work through all those things. It'll show you which achievements are too long and too short. And it'll help you work through your issues. And all while it's constructing the resume, you can also attach it to a job and it'll do a keyword comparison. You know, what our job, what our skills it's finding in the JD, whether you have them in here or not, it'll show you all of them. This is me just testing. So I must not have picked a very realistic JD. Um, but it'll help you find those keywords and all this stuff I was doing by hand is right here, built right into the tool to help you do that. And then your resume, uh, you can do all sorts of cool things. You can, you know, if you're a person who wants to see uh, the company first, you can do that. If you prefer to see position first, you can do that. Um, right here, you don't need entirely different templates. Those are all just settings. If it's really important for you to have the dates on the right, you can do that. Um, all those things are just settings. Um, that should have worked. Didn't like what I did there. But those things are built right into the resume builder. There's all sorts of very cool new features coming to it. But give it a shot. Um, building a resume is free. Some of these, uh, depending on when you signed up for Teal, some of this like analysis and matching is limited to the top five uh, before you get to Teal Plus. But um, give it a go. Let us know what you think. Hopefully it can help you build your resume. And then the job tracker can help you with the keywords and things like that. All right, so... 
Uh, if you have any questions, comments, let us know. Engage uh, with us on LinkedIn. We're trying to do these every week. Uh, sometimes I'll have a guest, sometimes I won't. It was really fun to have Dan here. If there's someone you'd love to get resume advice from and have them join, you know, call them out on LinkedIn to join us. Uh, I really enjoy doing these. Hopefully you gained insights. These will be recorded. This is being recorded and it'll be shared on YouTube. So sign up for, if you're a Teal member, you're on our newsletter automatically. If not, you can sign up for our newsletter and you will be notified. And if you want to have your resume reviewed, submit it on the form. And uh, hopefully we can get to it next week. All right. So thanks everyone for joining. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and good luck with your job search. See y'all soon.